Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the TNT Podcast. As always, it's Tyler Layfield, joined by my co-host, Torres Finney. What's up, Torres? What's up, Tyler? Man, man, man. I'm telling you, bro, I'm so excited. Hey, today starts off a great week, which, in all honesty, is the first week of getting ready for my fight week, you know? First week of my first ever MMA fight. I can't wait, man. You know, oh, yeah. I got all the stuff playing. I got my walkout song playing. Uh-oh. I'm getting my weight cut playing. So, you know, y'all know, y'all will know more about, about it uh, <laughs> when day, the day comes. But I cannot wait for Saturday, man. I expect to put on the show. You know, if y'all can tune in, you know, um, tune in, man. And, uh, man, I cannot. I'm excited. I'm excited. Definitely. You know, that, it's been exciting. But, I mean, we got also talk about it. not only am I fighting, I mean, about me fighting, but uh-huh. this past weekend. Oh, I mean, yeah. Oh, uh, man. was great nice. fights. Exciting. Yes. I mean, Israel, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm done doubting Israel. I would never do that again. Unless he fights John Jones. Unless he fights John Jones. That's oh, it. man. But yeah. then again, even then, I don't even know. How about that? It's pretty close. Dude. If you want to talk about a crisp performance, like not even a mistake, that's probably as perfect of a, as a performance as you, as I've seen since when Conor McGregor beat Canelo Alvarez. Like he literally mm. just diced him up and then let the guy hit him at all nearly. Like pretty much what happened Paul there. <laughs> did nothing. He literally did nothing to Israel, and I, I was astonished about seeing that i mean yeah. man like he pit him on the level like okay we were talking about anderson silver which he already beat but that was an old anderson silver mm-hmm. i'm talking about like prime anderson silver when he just wrecking guy that's for real that was amazing man yeah. that was amazing. he's piecing him up i, I want to see about uh i think it was was it cannoneer he called out Cannon. after that so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see how that one's gonna go. But hey, we were talking about it in the group chat. This dude ain't going nowhere anytime soon. So no, he ain't it looks going like nowhere, he's gonna be holding man. it down for a while, man. He, he's gonna be having that belt for a minute. He is a beast. So mm-hmm. yeah, that, that was good. And then um Blahowicz, he pulled out the he pulled oh. the rung out, of, out from under all of us. Got that. Oh. Hey, he played. He he did very good in his match. So he did, that man. was awesome. And then Roy Val, hey Torres, Roy Val. High five, high five. Hey, let's we go, got that baby. one, baby. Hey. hey. The host got that one, baby. Suck it, guest. <laughs> yeah, suck it, guest. <laughs> look, I right, look. I ain't gonna lie. It shocked me when Roy Val when Roy Val came out there with that pace. Mm. Oh my goodness, man! Like the man was just constantly going at him, and he he got dropped. Uh, yeah, French yeah. dropped him, and did that. Speed. He came back. <laughs> amazing. I mean, amazing. Like that's the reason why that fight won the fight of the night. Yes, the, both of those guys deserve. The fifty thousand dollars, like that, yeah. deserved fighter of the night. Like that, that was, was fun. Amazing. That was fun. That was fun to watch. For sure, for sure. That that's that's what I kind of took away from it. Those were the three real main ones that I really uh, got into. And then, um, yeah, I don't know, man. It was it was a good one to watch. It was a good day overall for sports. I had a blast it watching. Was. The did did your dad watch it? Yeah, yeah, he was getting into it. We and him were just, you know. Uh, that last fight, and then of course the Roy Val fight. We were get, getting into that most of the. Um, for the most part. And then the Blahowicz, he was just, I don't know, that one was kind of slower paced. And then Blahowicz just Whoa. unloaded on him. Oh, uh, what was boy. it, the third round? He just started unloading Broke his on nose. Him. Broke yeah. his nose. Went ham. So, yeah, we watched that, and it was a blast. But let's break into some breaking news here. So, Torres and I, we're about to crank the show up. It's here uh, Monday evening, here around 6 o'clock. And something pops up on the phone from a, a Woj bomb, if you will, came up. Doc Rivers <laughs> is out with the Clippers. Uh, instant thoughts here from the Clip- Clipper Torres. How is it? What, what are the thoughts here, man? Well, let me tell you something. And for everyone, no, I am not a Clippers fan. Stop asking me that. No, I am a Mavericks fan. You may as well but be. I picked the Clippers because I do like Kawhi. He's a uh-huh. very good player. I know you do. And, he's and a good he one to like. Be. Yeah, he's, 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 he's pretty good. But I understand this decision by the Clippers, and here's why. Doc Rivers don't have multiple great teams for uh, the Clippers. He's been there since, what, 2011 or 12? He's been, been there a hot minute, yeah. Yeah. Um, went through their whole rebuilding phase, did some good stuff yeah. with those younger teams that really That's everybody right. wrote off. I mean, d- no cracks on the guy. He's been a great coach. Um, but 
so far, all he has to show for it is that one ring so far. Um, exactly, that one ring in Boston. Yeah, you know what? And I, and I remember, yes, he did leave around 2011, I believe, mm-hmm. because he left when Paul Pierce and remember Ray Allen and Darnett all went to the Nets yeah. that one yeah. that one season like that. And then, you know, Ray Allen didn't want to go. But mm-hmm. overall, I saw that Doc Rivers, you don't have so much talent. You had Chris Paul, you had Blake Griffin, Paul George, Kawhi. I mean, you don't had a lot of good teams, and you keep coming up short. I remember the year was it? I think it was 2013 when they beat the uh, Spurs in the first round. Not 13, sorry, 14. When they beat the Spurs mm-hmm. in the first round in seven games. It's yeah. like, oh man, this Clippers team they finally got it. Yeah. Then they go up three one on the Rockets and give up the and then give it up. Yes, that's his second three one. Given up, so he's he's I, done it a few yeah. times. I know he did it in uh, I think he coached with the Magic for a little bit in the '90s or something like that, or early 2000s. I know he blew, he blew one there too. So he's yeah, he's got a track record with three ones. You know, he's a really good coach. I think he's a really good defensive coach. Mm-hmm. But I think I think he, I don't know, man. I just don't know that he really can like motivate his players the right way i think he let the players run him more than he they him running running them yeah you know it's a difference when you had guys like you know you had guys like phil jackson phil jackson knew how to make the stars play like to be honest i don't think phil jackson would just go and coach a random team and they'd be really 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 good like the kobe and the mjs i don't think that he can get that team to that level he had to have stars everybody phil jackson had he had stars same thing with steve Kerr. I think Steve Kerr's a real good coach. The mm-hmm. reason why he's going to be monster great because he had stars. I don't think he yeah. just go on any team. He inherited he a great stars. roster to at least put great some roster. great pieces to build off of, for that matter. He did. But, like, unlike Doc Rivers, is more attested to something like Pox, where he had to draft majority of his guys and build them up from the start to the, from the ground up. Mm. Pop is really good at doing that. Doc is actually pretty good at doing that, but he's not consistent. See, Pops don't done it and won titles and yeah. had the longest consecutive playoff uh, uh, appearance. makes yeah. the appearances mm-hmm. in NBA history. While Doc consistently makes the playoffs or sometimes miss and gets put out. And yeah. But he has a, sometimes a better team. So, I mean, I'm looking at this, man, and I'm looking at more of, hey, you, you got a better team this time. You can't keep mm-hmm. doing that. You can't keep doing that. And – I truly believe that this was the best decision for um, the Clippers. It's going to be really interesting to see who they get, you know. Uh, right you know, now, I'll tell you, uh, Woj came out and said Ty Lu and former Rockets and Knicks coach Jeff Van Gundy are the two oh! candidates right now, two top candidates. So, uh, there you go right there. What do you think about either of those? I know you're not the um, biggest Ty Lu guy, uh, just from I'm previous discussions guy. we've had. but and I'm not a Ty Lu guy. I'm uh-huh. sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. Ty Lue is not good. Every, anyone, I don't care what, no, no one can convince me. Because okay. when you're in the NBA Finals and you forget how many timeouts you got and you the head coach, don't, don't. Uh-uh, I don't want to hear it. LeBron got them to the Finals. LeBron with that. J.R. Smith threw soup in his face, and he didn't do nothing. Mm. LeBron was the head mm. coach, not Tyron Lue. Let me just get that out <laughs> Tower, like when they say Tower Lou brought them back down 3 1. LeBron brought them back down. 3-1. Yeah, yeah, but I, I'm not going to run him off all the way. He did play a part in that, but I'm not going to say you that. Know what? Tell he's me, a what, great what guy. Do? What did he do? He helped motivate it and everything. I'm, you can ask those players on that team. I'm not going to say that he was the main reason. It was definitely LeBron, like you said. I'm not I'm not debating that right there, but I'm not going to just say Ty Lu was just a babysitter at that. But, you know, he did do something. Uh, Bro, Ty Lu, he resonated with that team. You know what I'm saying? Like they couldn't, they couldn't really Are you relate. Sure? Are Bro, you they sure couldn't about relate. That? The guy they had before him was freak a Russian coach. You know what I'm saying? Who David was, Blatt. David I know Blatt was he good. Got, they ain't gonna relate to him. They, they, like it was never gonna happen, bro. Like you, you got to be able to relate to the to the players. And Talu could. He was. He's been there. He's done that. He's been a player. I don't know, man. I think he he meshed pretty well. He was able to joke around with him. They had a good culture. But yada, yada, yada. But, yeah, I'm not going to debate that LeBron wasn't the reason, but um, I, I don't want to completely just they, straight up see, here this trash Tyron Lue. Well, see, this is what's crazy to me. David Blatt had the number one seed in the East when he got fired. Mm. David Blatt was also on that team when they played the Young Warriors team 
And there's a reason why that Cavs team went up 2-1 on the Warriors. They had okay. some guys playing. Timothy Mozgov was playing. Matthew Della Vadova. Yeah. And one of those games, LeBron had an awful game where Timothy Mozgov was the leading scorer. So, I mean, and, and they and I and what they well, they lost that game, but yeah. they won the game previously to that. Those guys were playing. I mean, I don't know. I don't okay. Know, look, look, firing David Black and just keeping Tyron Lue, who was the assistant coach, what the heck was he doing even better? They won a championship, so you can't really argue with it, man. It's just like they if, we're, if, we're, if, we're, if we're debating Black. the Kawhi trade going to Toronto, they gambled and they won. You know what I'm saying? Cleveland gambled by firing David Black and they won. So it's like one of those things you can't really debate. I don't know. I'm not going to get into it, but – before we started the show today, Torres and I were sitting here. We were talking about – because on Twitter, Torres has had some words talking about the Lakers, how, you know, he, he's been saying that uh, the Clippers – Asterisk. Here, and I, I sit here and I tell him, dude, they didn't deserve to move on. They were up 3-1. They didn't deserve it. And anytime you blow a 3-1 lead, to me, you don't deserve to move on. That's just how it works. That's just how the world is. If you do it, sorry. Tough, tough, tough stuff. I'm sorry, but you can't – you can't move on from that. And he was just like, man, but they had so much talent. Yes, on paper, the Clippers, that's the reason why you guys picked them. They had so much talent from the top to the bottom. They look great on paper. And that's the reason why you, Zach, Jackson, y'all all had them pretty much, you know, making the finals. And then I'm pretty sure – I think all y'all had them winning. But what, I, what I'm trying to get at here, I think that they probably had some stuff going on in the locker room just from stuff that we talked about. I mean, you brought up the 4 Lakers, how they lost to the Pistons. They had all the talent they had, but – we all know what was going on between Kobe and Shaq. We're starting to learn more stuff now. Doc wasn't the yeah. best coach. Apparently, Paul George came after and after they lost and said he's not giving up on the team and people rolled their eyes. I don't know, man. A lot of stuff's coming out about this team. Maybe they just weren't meshing well as what we thought they would. Well, I, I, I want you to look at this. For one, the Clipper – okay, the 3-1 talk, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you deserve – obviously, you don't deserve to go because you lost. No. Obviously. But there's a reason you go up 3-1. You don't yeah. go up 3-1 by luck. Mm -mm. You go up by 3-1 by luck. So the things that transpired those final three games had to be something drastic. A la something very similar to that 2016 NBA Finals. Drastic. Mm -hmm. Like Draymond gets suspended. Same thing that happened with the Clippers. Drastic. Having two 19-point lead in both game five and game six with Kawhi and Paul George playing phenomenal. Both over, both of them dropping over 25 points per game. Where were the bench? Where was Lou Williams? Oh, that's right. Lou Williams was over here scoring two points, shooting like one for nine. Oh, oh, what about what about uh, Marcus Morris? Oh, he had five points. Oh, okay. Well, what about uh, my boy uh, over here, um, the guy that won six man of the year? Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. should have won. He only got he only got five points as well. See, the guys that they supposed to depend on aren't doing anything. They weren't doing anything. But yeah. do you revert that back to the head coach, the head coach of Doc Rivers? How are these guys not getting in the flow? How are you not being able to switch in and now be good? I'm being honest with you. I, I mean, yes, he probably was injured. You know, he probably wasn't ready. I would have threw a Joe King Noah somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I probably would have, you know, just to, just to spice some things up. You know, you never know. They need. That was that really what might help Miami. You know, we're having under equal dollars. He's not playing a lot of minutes at all. I mean, he played a few minutes, but he's not playing a bunch of minutes. No. In the NBA Finals, they might throw him in. He might, he might go from playing 10 minutes to playing 25 minutes because of the impact that he can have on the game. And I don't think Doc Rivers can see that type of stuff. I don't think he can see it. No, it, it, it looks like he's not able to see it. And I don't know. Either way, we know something wasn't right, and uh, there's going to be some changes coming up. They're talking about possible trades and whatnot. So it looks like the Clippers are going to be a different team next year, at least to some degree. Um, so while yeah. we're on the topic of, uh, of basketball here, we know who's going to the finals. It's going to be the Heat from the East versus the Lakers from the West. And I know how I feel. I think LeBron's about to get that fourth ring here. So uh, I think it's going to be in five games, pretty standard for us, five in the first round, five in the second round, five in the third round. Let's make it five in the finals. I'd love a sweep, but just don't – judging based off of history, I just don't think it's going to happen. So, um, yeah, I'll go, I'll go Lakers in five here. I think they'll end up pulling this one out. Apparently, 
apparently, I don't know if you saw this, but on Inside the NBA, Shaq came out and said that he's heard from inside sources that the Lakers were actually wanting to play the Heat in the finals. So, thoughts on that? Why do you think that would be, even if this uh, report is true? Well, you want to know why? Why? <laughs> who's going to guard Anthony Davis? Well, I mean, who you don't you, you don't think Bam can uh, can stand in, in the way? I, I mean, bro, I, I don't think so. Oh wow! I'm sorry, man. I I, 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 I could, on I Bam, want, man. I, I want to be wrong. I want to be. Oh, wrong. I know you want to be wrong. I if it's up to Torres, this will be a sweep <laughs> of the heat, probably. I I already know what what it, you're gonna be rooting for. Oh uh, man. man! But I can't. I mean, the Heat is a very good defensive team overall. They are. Top to bottom, really good yeah, defensive yeah. team. I mean, they did some things to the Celtics that, like, even uh, – what's his name? The coach uh, – the Celtics coach was saying Brad himself. Stevens. Brad Stevens. Yeah, he was like, I ain't never seen all season. Like, mm -hmm. they're playing with a different intensity. They come in full-fledged. Like, we have to truly play to be able to score the basketball. They're not allowing you to get in the paint too easily. But the main thing is – it's going to be hard because the Lakers' defense is playing really good in the entire yeah. playoff. Their defense is playing really well. I mean, they give up some points here and there to, um, you know, Jamal Murray, but he's making some yeah. phenomenal oh, shots. Jamal was making crazy shots. Crazy shots, man. Yeah. Like, and Damian Lillard, crazy. James Harden had like a game, I want to say, that he did good. Mm -hmm. So they, they let some crazy stuff shots, man. every now and then. Yeah, it happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. But overall – the whole team, everybody else on their team, shut them down. There's a reason why. They only lost one game. Now, they should have lost two. The Nuggets should have had two. But that buzzer beat them by Anthony Davis. Yeah, that was just nasty. It was a lifesaver. That you know was what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> but overall, I mean, I look at it and, you know, I, I really just look at the defensive team of Miami. They remind me a little bit of, like, the Pistons back then, back in the okay. 04, you know. They had a really good defensive team. They wasn't going to score the basketball a whole bunch. With the thing with the Heat, they do got some really good uh, guys that uh, can shoot. Yeah. Obviously, you got Jimmy Butler, you know, Bam Adebayo. Crowder's or, been uh, shooting pretty good. Duncan Robinson, Tyler Duncan Hero, Robinson. Lauren yeah, Dragic. Robinson. They got shooters, bro. They got shooters they on the They got day. some streaky guys that can get hot real quick. Yeah. They do. And this is more of a storyline. I mean, hey, you're in Florida. You know, Miami got a chance to technically win it on their home, you know, home ground land. Yeah. And you got the rivalry between Pat Riley, who thought he could have had a dynasty with LeBron yeah. and never left Miami. Man. And Eric Spolster, you know, you know, a lot of people, Respect. a lot of Heat fans. Lot, so there's still some Heat fans out there that take that to heart a little bit, LeBron leaving. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really interesting. And it's going to be really interesting to see Jimmy Butler and LeBron go at it. You know, that's going to be a really interesting yeah. matchup. I'm interested to see how he comes out. I, I expect at least one or two, like, ridiculously kind of low-scoring games because both of these teams, like you said, are very defensive. I expect the Lakers to attack Goran Dragic and to attack Tyler Hero, maybe even go at, like, a guy like Duncan Robinson. Yeah. I, I don't know. If any, if there's any weaknesses there, it's kind of that. I mean, Iguodala can come off the bench and play some great defense. Crowder plays some pretty good defense. You know, Jimmy's going to do it. And Bam, my opinion, Bam, Bam might be more of a problem than when you're – than what you're expecting, man. I, I think uh, he might can throw a wrench in the mix on Anthony Davis here and there, but AD's been playing on another level, bro. So yeah, man. I, I yeah. still expect the Lakers to pull this one out, but uh, I think that'll probably be, be the game plan. I don't know how Miami is uh, planning on coming at uh, LeBron and AD, but we'll, we'll have to see, I guess. But Well, with me, I have the Lakers in six. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, LeBron will get the fourth one, man. Um First man to win the title with three different uh, three different games. No, well, not the first man to win it. Well, I think he will be the first guy to win finals MVP with three different teams. We'll see uh, about that. It depends on how AD uh, comes out, man. It depends on how AD plays. AD's going to compete with it. Yeah. Which could, which could throw a wrench into things. But, uh, yeah, I, I see LeBron. I mean, LeBron is 10th final. He got the team. There's no reason why they shouldn't win. If they, if I mean, they, yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not denying it, bro. They, they, they should win this, okay? We'll, I'll it come out there and say they should win this. Yes. If they lose this now, if they we got some problems, look, we got some problems. I, I already, I already said it myself. Like, I don't think this is a whole nother case, but yes. I don't think LeBron right now can catch Jordan. 
Hey, would this bring them closer? Obviously, because this is something that yeah. a lot nobody ever done. You know, mm-hmm. three final MVPs, ten finals. He's up there with Kareem and Bill Russell. You know, in those type mm-hmm. of categories, and he's just on another level. It but would take, I and, and with, I agree, man. I, I'll just to butt in real quick. I agree. Michael Jordan is still he's better right now. What I what I think though is I think that he has the opportunity to get there if he can keep keep playing at this level. That's going to be difficult just because age is coming in, a, yeah. attrition, like it, stuff like that. It's going to happen, man. So if he can keep doing it, he's got a shot. But we'll he see. Got a shot, but we'll see. I know. I will say now, if he loses this series, I know you you gonna you, hey, you gonna let me you're gonna let me have it just oh, like I let y'all have it. Oh no 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 no! You go board and hear it. Oh oh man! You might have to delete your Twitter. If he lose this series, let me tell you something. I wouldn't, I will, oh my goodness. It goes I would saying, never, man. ever, I would <laughs> never, ever for the rest of my life argue LeBron versus Michael Jordan. Ever I know. This hey. I would never again. Because it's a foregone conclusion. You're fine. I'm not even going to deny it, brother. If he does it, you're right. All right. You heard me here first. You can clip it if you want. All right. All, all right. right so, hey. With that being said, let's move on to NFL this past week. We got we got to talk about it, man. Another big Falcons loss. It feels like this is just going to be a weekly topic for us. <laughs> is, that, is that is that what it's going to be? Because man, uh, up on the Bears, everything was hitting right. Uh, Trubisky was playing bad. Then Foles comes in. Things start looking good for the Bears. Man, I, I don't know. Julio was out. Uh, Russell Gage did get hurt. That did play a factor into things, but I didn't get to watch too much of the second half, so you'll have to fill me in a little bit, bit, little bit here. But what happened? Well, let me tell you what happened. It was a Georgia team being a Georgia team. So let us go to get people think straight. we exaggerate that stuff, man. That we talk oh, about Georgia God. teams like that. Dude, it's real. It's real. I talk to these folks here in Tennessee. You know, they're people from every different which ways, and mm-hmm. I tell them. I'd be like, bro, uh, when I was watching the game with four of my teammates. I said, let me tell y'all something. Do not be surprised that Chicago comes back and win. And the moment they pitted Nick Foles, I literally said this. I said, guess what? You remember when Georgia lost when they switched out Hurts for two? Oh, God. And then the next year, the two for Hurts? I said, guess what? That's about to be the same thing that happened to the Falcons. Oh, and they God. said, no, there's no way. The Falcons are 26 to 10 for like seven minutes to go. Three offensive drives the Falcons had, and they threw the ball on nearly every single play of 16 points on their three final drives. You want to know how many times they ran the ball? You want to know how many times they ran the ball? Tell me. Oblige me. Once. Oh, God. What? You have a 16-point lead with the game in hand. The Bears had two touchdowns taken away from them. The one when they thought it was a touchdown over the Dark West. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and, and yeah. I, and Allen Robinson. Touchdown. I saw that one, yeah. They called that one back. It was uh-huh. another touchdown that it got caught on fourth and goal, and they called it back because they said the ball hit the ground. Oh. So that's two times that the Bears could have scored, yeah. and they didn't. And then when the Bears did score, they didn't even get the two-point conversion. So I, just, I sit here and I sit, and, bro, the Falcons literally on these drives, we're just only knocking 20 seconds off the clock and punt the ball right back to Chicago. And I'm sitting here like, what is this team doing? Mm-hmm. I, 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 I am literally shocked because it's like they're trying to lose. It's like they're trying to lose. Hey, speaking, <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of coaches uh, leaving teams, you know, speaking of Doc, you know, leaving the Clippers, uh, when, when is uh, Dan Quinn going to be let go here, man? I mean, the, the Falcons fans are calling for his head. It seems like it'd be the logical thing to do, right? Like, that would be yeah. the right move to make. Uh, but then on Twitter later that day, we're seeing reports of the players are standing behind Coach Quinn. They're saying they're taking the responsibility on themselves that this was their fault and not his, that kind of stuff. So, I mean, dude, are, are we at this point where maybe we could see possibly by the end of this day? I mean, guys, if it happens, I'm sorry we didn't break it, but could we see maybe by the end of this day or maybe this week that Coach Quinn maybe gets fired? Uh, we could, bro. Let me let me tell you this. They said this same stuff last year. Mm. You remember you remember when Dan Quinn was so on the hot seat last year and they had to play for his job 
And guess he what? switched the coaches did. around. He he changed all the other coaches. Yeah. And then I they mean, went I on remember. a win. Then they went on a winning streak. And then they beat one of the teams that was in the Super Bowl, the 49ers. Yeah. So then you was like, oh, okay, okay, the Falcons actually can, they can do something. Let's 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 see next year. And yeah. then now they're starting out 0 and 3. Next Monday they playing the Packers on Monday night, which more than likely will not see them. And then they got well, I think then they got to go to Green Bay. Look here, man. Look. Atlanta's about to start off the same way, finish off what six and ten, if that, five yeah. and eleven. You still got you still are in one of the hardest divisions in football. You still got the Bucks left. You still got the Saints left. So man, what 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 do you, what do, where am I looking at this stuff at? Like, where is this coming from? Like Atlanta, y'all have the offensive weapons. They are the first team to have to score this many points. In the span of three weeks, to be zero and three, they they literally they potentially got the highest scoring offense in the league, and they just but no losing. defense, no defense. Oh, and but what type of coaches they have? I know. I may hey exactly. I'll tell you this. I went into work today. You, you know, I work with Zach. Zach said, "Man, I'm no longer even a Falcons fan." He said, "He said <laughs> I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna root for my fantasy team, and that's it." So he's done resigned. <laughs> he, he got Falcons fans quitting, bro. They they're done. So they're sick of it. Like, yeah. how do you keep like? You rip the Super Bowl from the heart, and then you rip, you know, you keep ripping it from the heart every time you have a big time game. You lose for the yeah. last second of foolishness. Like <laughs> it just happened. I mean, it, it sucks. I'm sorry, guys, but we'll get through this together. All right, we'll get through this. Y'all be fine. There's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So uh, yeah, hopefully. let's let's leave this one though. I, I don't want to get too depressed on this show. So let's uh, <laughs> let's move on to another game here. Uh, did any did any other games stand out to you? I know that you were able to watch a good bit of that uh, Seattle and Dallas game. Heard that was a good one. Didn't get to catch much, most of it, but man, heard some good stuff. So what you what you think about that game? Well, well, with Seattle and Dallas, I mean, you obviously saw that. Again, as me and you both said on the show, Russell Wilson is the MVP right now, man. Yes. I don't care what nobody Far said. Away. No interceptions. I mean, he threw for what? Um, he threw for uh, 315 yards, five touchdowns. Like, dude, 27 for 40? Like, man, this man was nearly having a perfect game. Then you Now, I will say you look at Dak. Dak had a really good game. Yeah. And He's, I hey, say he hasn't been playing bad at all. I think somebody yeah. uh, somebody showed a stat that he went like 400 or 500 attempts without throwing an interception. That's like the first time that's ever been done in Cowboys history. So he's playing really that. good, guys. He is. And Mike McCarthy really got him playing really well right now. I mm-hmm. will say that. You know, Mike McCarthy, he was one of the main reasons they had uh, um, Aaron Rodgers. You know, he helped develop Aaron Rodgers a little bit. He's known for developing good quarterbacks. Yeah. And I think I can see a little bit of that in that. Um, you know, Dak threw for 472 yesterday, three touchdowns. But what hurt them, I mean, they really didn't have a really good running game, but it was within the game the entire time. Um, I mean, the Cowboys were there. They had an opportunity to win at the end. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the thing – and the thing that's going to hunt Seattle – the only thing – that's this is the thing. Seattle is more like they, – they could be a Super Bowl team. But the only thing that hurts me is their secondary. Their secondary yeah, I'm about to say, they're, they're getting roasted every week by receivers. Mm-hmm. They are. They, they're giving up it's a lot bad. of points every week. They are. So, and you look at Seattle, I mean, you are in a division that, you know, Cardinals just got a top receiver. Yeah. They can slowly come in and steal that. You know, Seattle played the Dolphins next week. They'll beat the Dolphins. Yeah. You know, they got the Vikings. They'll beat the Vikings. Yeah. But then you got the Cardinals, and the 49ers are not bad now. I mean, Coach Shannon, I mean, Coach um, uh, Kyle Shannon, mm-hmm. I mean, he's doing it. He's doing it. Like, He's finding a way to get those 49ers to a point. Even through the injuries, I don't, he's doing All it. these injuries. Wait till these guys get healthy. Now, some of them are not going to be able to come back. But if, if he can withstand, like, win enough games to where he can have his core guys back, watch out for those 49ers. But I look at Seattle. I mean, they're a top team right now. And with Dallas, you know, they should be 0-3, to be honest with you. If it wasn't for the Falcons blunder, they should be 0-3. Oh, my God. You ain't kidding. Yeah. You can and, definitely make that case. And right now, I mean, they're not a bad team. You look at that division. The, the Redskins, 1-2. and two. The Giants, 0-3. Oh the Cowboys, 1-2. and two. The Eagles, 0-2-1. Oh and one. Yeah, that's not it's not a good division. Oh, I should like. <laughs> but every year, it comes down to the team who's going to go what? If you win eight games, you're going to win the division? Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, they're, they're still well within 
the reach of it, man. That's what's crazy. <laughs> right. Uh, one of the games that we highlighted uh, on our late show last week was when we were picking our games uh, was the Bills Rams. That was one that we thought we knew that that was going to be a close one, and we actually split on that one. And I got to yeah. say, man, your pick should have been right. I know that you I'm went with so the close. you went with the Rams on that, and man, what a game though. They were up. Uh, the Bills were running the show, man. They looked great. J- Speaking of MVP guys, Josh Allen. If Russell Wilson's leading, Josh Allen is right behind him. He's got to be, man, because he's been playing great, great football. Throwing, running, making all sorts of plays. He's he's, he's been a great pick for them so far. And that offense looks great. The defense is – you know, they've always had the defense. If they can match it with a great offense, they'd be fine. And so far, so good with them this year. And they were dominating that whole game. The Rams start slowly making their way back, though. And it gets within reach. They end up actually even taking the lead. Aaron Donald, man, I saw – did you see that play by him where he just made it with the offensive lineman? Yes. Let me tell you Sheesh. something. Beast. A be- and you know what? That will hurt the Rams. The Rams started off really slow yeah. um, defensively. That that was not how they really played defense. But uh, I will say this. When they got going, that defense is what helped, actually helped them get that comeback going. Yeah. Because they started to make plays, then they intercepted Josh Allen. I mean, bro, that Rams had went on a surge. Like, they just started firing off coming back. Yeah. And it, it was about to be funny because I was about to say, they were up 20 to 3. And I was like, uh-oh, here we go. Here comes the Falcons, and it, yeah. Here come the Falcons, yeah. But the Bills made sure to shut that down off a very controversial call. Yeah. Referees on that pass interference. Which yeah. I don't think it was. It shouldn't have been called, honestly. It should have been called. Now, yeah, yeah, they got very lucky on that and ended up scoring and winning yeah, the game. Scoring. So mm-hmm. that's how that one went. Great game, though. Um, let's see here. I know that you mentioned the Eagles happened to tie them and the Bengals ended up tying it up. What'd you think? What'd you see from your Steelers this week against the Texans? Oh man, my boys! Hey, I would tell you something. Like I, I, I knew it was gonna be a little tough game. Uh, Deshaun Watson came out a little hot. He comes to game. play, man. Deshaun's he no comes to play. Yeah, man. It was great to see all the Watt brothers in there together. TJ Watt had a phenomenal game. The Steelers are leading the league in sacks. I mean, we're just sacking everybody. I right, mean, I'm telling, like, we're just sacking everybody. The steel curtain, baby. I know. And I thought that's why I kept telling people. People was like, should I get the Steelers as a defense on uh, fantasy? I of said, course. boy, you're smoking, you're smoking of crack. Course. You don't get them boys. Like, yeah. you got the pass rushers. You got Mika. I mean, only thing, I do worry about our corners sometimes. Sometimes we give up some stuff. Joe I, Hayden, I'm man. I'm liking the Steelers. Big Ben is playing, baby. He's playing. Like, Big Ben is playing. Like, when he's healthy, man, he's a he's an animal. That's what makes him a Hall of Fame when he's healthy. We got a lot of weapons. You know, Benny Snell, James Conner. Hey, Anthony McFarlane made it a little appearance Anthony for you guys. Yeah. I, I'm saying, like, oh, we got all your running backs from Jalen Samuels. Yeah. I saw where uh, Deontay had to lead the game a little early due to a concussion. Yeah, that one kind of sucks. I'm a, I'm a big believer in him this year. But but you still got Juju. Eric James Ebron. Washington stepped up. I, James Washington. Oh, yes. Clay Claypool, the rookie. Yeah, it'll I be mean, somebody you, that can step up. It's going to be something else. But overall, I look and I say that next week, we'll know more about the Steelers. They playing the Titans. So, yeah. you know, last time we played a top-tier running back, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, for the Giants, Saquon Barkley. He's he out. Rushes six yards. Yeah, he's out. Yeah. We we shut him down that game. You know, mm-hmm. are we gonna be able to shut down Derrick Henry? But see, now we're playing a better I, offensive hey, line. I think so, man. I think you guys yeah. can do it. Playing play a better offensive line. Is You're be right. So, you know, and then we got to, you know, they got the double dude. I mean, Brian Tannehill is playing phenomenal. You know, I'm, he's I'm playing pretty good. Yeah. Titans. He's playing pretty good, man. Those Titans look like they uh. They started back where they left off from last year. So, mm-hmm. it'll be interesting. And I also yeah. want to give a little shout-out to, like, uh, the Browns player, Harrison Bryant. Yes. Harrison caught his first touchdown yesterday. Yes, so. sir. Good job, Harrison, on that one, baby. Yeah, let's go, man. Congrats, bro. I mean, that's a, that's an honor. You know, I got to oh, yeah. remember. We was with him. We was, you know, yay high <laughs> In jo- at Jones County. So, that's good, Harrison. Congrats on that, bud. Oh, yeah. And the Buccaneers, boy, you know, they starting to get say. Them, they starting to get there a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. they still look a little shaky here in their offense. But I would say that Buccaneers defense is lethal. That's what's gonna keep them in a lot of games. I okay. hope a lot of people understand. A lot of people try to compare 
Brady to what happened with Peyton Manning, you know, when he first went to the Broncos, which is very similar. And But Brady's starting to catch on. I mean, he threw, what, four touchdowns yesterday? Yeah, so two to Evans. And God, God, God when they get hurt, he, he might be out for a little bit. He got a little yeah. hamstring injury, so that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, they're run, they're running better. back. Yeah, Gronk, Gronk actually, hey, he made some catches this week. That's that's yes. new for this offense. Six catches. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because they haven't been throwing to that man at all, really. He's at just all. been a blocker, really. So Yeah, just wait, though. Just yeah, wait. If, if they can unlock that, that's that's a good weapon for them. So, mm-hmm. hey, we'll have to see. The running game, I know Ronald Jones got back in it this this week. He was, like, the main guy for them in the running. That that They're going to be a running back by committee, honestly, this whole year. They, they got some good people net. to play with. So, mm-hmm. it'll, be, it'll be interesting to watch. Uh, and the defense. Hey, defense showed up for me on fantasy. They've, they've been, a pretty good de- they've been mm-hmm. doing good. They've been Did doing they play good. the Chargers next week? I mean – I, hey, the Buckers, and then they play the Bears, which is gonna be a really good game when they play oh, yeah. the Bears in two weeks. Hopefully, Nick Foles, you know Nick Foles and Brady, you know oh, that yeah. boy. So, Revenge. I mean, Buccaneers, Buccaneers got some, you know, tough games after that. I mean, they got yeah. Bears after the Chargers. They got the Bears, then they got the Packers, and then they got the Raiders. You know, who've been playing really well. Yeah, so, Raiders um, been playing better than they. It's gonna be expected. interesting to see. I cannot wait. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good games coming up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, let's see. Just a couple more games to highlight. I know Lions-Cardinals was a good one. That came down to the wire, 26-23 Lions. Um, what, did you see anything there that you really want to highlight? No, toward the end of the game, uh, they the Cardinals probably could have won that game pretty handedly, but they – I don't know. They just quit throwing to DeAndre Hopkins, which didn't make any sense. Uh, So, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you got that kind of a guy on your team, uh, you you need to use him, especially when you paid him like you did this offseason. I mean, dude, I mean, you look at that game and look at DeAndre Hopkins, he had 10 catches for 137 yards. (laughs) He He could have did more, too, man. He could have did more at the end to win the game. See, I mean, I didn't really get an opportunity to see that game, but uh, Mm. what I – what I did see, I mean, Air uh, Kyler Murray threw three interceptions. You know, that was unusual for him. So yeah, low game he got to get back into the things, you know, being you know consistent. It happens. You don't have bad games. But he still mm-hmm. – he threw for two and ran for one. You know, when he had that little spin juke move and ran to the end zone. I yeah. mean, the man is fast. The man is fast. Good athlete. But I, I look at the Cardinals and I say, you know, hey. Future's bright. You know, future's bright. And it, and it was bound for the Lions to win a game. I mean, you know, they got Matthew Stafford. They got a really good team. Mm-hmm. You know, the Lions – The Lions are like the Texans. You know, they got a really good team. Do they, are they going to win all the time? Probably no. not. But they got a really good team, and they can steal a game from you anytime. So, you yep. got to be mindful. You got to be on the P's and Q's. So, yeah. Yeah, and then to top it off, uh, last night's game, Packers Saints didn't get to watch this whole thing. I know that you were uh, that you were up for uh, all of that one, right? So you got yeah. to pretty much see that the Saints are still kind of scaring me, man. Drew Brees is not going down the field with the ball. It's like mainly dump offs to Alvin Kamara, and hey, it's it's been working okay because Kamara's yes. been up that one freaking catch and run that he had was. What was that, man? Like no tackling from the Packers whatsoever. Uh, but man, he took over. Kamara's been a beast so far this year. He has been. I mean, to be honest with you, he's I looking like the best running back in the league right now. If we're talking about right now, he's looking like the best running back in the league. Well, I would say he's looking like the best receiving running back. Let me tell you something. Got that how, many right. back, how many running backs you know have more catches than touches? I mean, than carries. Him. That's, that's it. He had 13 catches and only six carries. Like, that's, that's backwards. Crazy. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. backwards. Yeah, he made a little jog to the end zone on that play when Drew Brees dumped it out. He jogged to the end zone. Yeah. He was dodging tackles, jogging. The man had 13 catches for 139 yards, two touchdowns as a running back. Yeah. You would say, okay, you say, oh, that's really good for uh, rushing. No, no, no. That was receiving. Yeah. The rushes, he only had six carries for 58 yards. And they used Latavius Murray more in the run game. But, I mean, I really don't I, – until I look at the Saints, I mean – I look at that defense a little bit as well. Uh, defense ain't really playing too well. You know, you know they, mm-hmm. they didn't play too well against – like I said, that first game of the season – I thought they were going to be Buccaneers great. Buccaneers was actually – they weren't – I mean, they played okay, but the Buccaneers started to catch a little fire. And yeah. if it weren't for that Brady pick six, they would have had a big opportunity, you know, to still been in that game. True. Then, and then you look at last week against the Raiders, and then, you know, playing the uh, Packers. I mean, I knew uh, – that's why I picked them against the Packers because – 
Rodgers and, and Aaron Jones, dude. Those guys look good. Alan Lazard. I mean, oh, that, that was somebody that showed up last night. Yeah. Yes, man. Ooh, boy. He's hitting them deep. Jones. Man, he look good. Yes. Yeah. But I look at the Saints. I mean, the Saints, you got to play, man, because next week they got the Lions. And they got Chargers, Panthers, you know, that's a few wins. But the Bears, yeah, yeah. and the Bucks again, the 49ers, they ain't no slouch. The Falcons, you know, they always split every year with them boys. So, mm-hmm. um, you better get going. I mean, you don't want to be that. I mean, because what do we pick? I mean, I picked them to win the division. I did. I think I, I did, did as well. I, I definitely did as well. Like that. Yeah. yeah. So, Drew Brees got, has to pick it up, man. So, that, that's, yeah. that's, that's really the key to it all. If he can pick it up, they'll be fine. If not, then I, I don't know. My – my hopes for them doing great. Well, not that I'm hoping they'll do great, but just for the sake of my pick, you know, I'm hoping they'll do all right. Um, but, yeah, I, I just don't see them doing the best if he keeps playing how he is. Um, yeah. But, hey, on the other hand, Rodgers looks good, man, on the Packers side of the ball. He has bought into that system. I know last year they were – him and the coach were kind of button heads. Uh, now they're looking like a match made in heaven. He, the system is going – he is playing in that system really well. and. Um, I don't know, man. The, the offense looks great. The defense is normally pretty decent. So, Packers are a good team this year. They should make it pretty far. They should. I mean, I look at the Packers right now, and they're offensively top to bottom. Great receivers. Obviously, great quarterback. Got a really good running back out of Aaron Jones. Mm-hmm. This is a team you should watch out for when you talk about Super Bowl. This is this is one of those guys. This is oh, one yeah. of those teams. So. Most Watch certainly. out for those Packers, man. Most certainly. Uh, well, any other NFL games you wanted to break down real quick? No, nah, man. I mean, I wish we had it, but we ain't got it. It's on. It's actually, you know, obviously y'all know we pre-recorded, but it's tonight. So we'll break that's it the down. main game. Can't wait to see that one. But. Yeah, we're going to break that one down here for this uh, the late show this week, man. We got to. We got to talk about that one. Those are so, more than likely the two teams that's coming from the AFC. So, yeah. That's going to be a good one for sure. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll have to break that one down whenever we get the next show in. But, yeah, well, hey, next show we'll probably get some uh, some some more college football picks in, and uh, we'll probably have a, a guest on at some point here this this week. So that'll be good as well. Right. And get some picks in for NFL this coming up week. So that'll be good. But uh, anything else you wanted to cover, Torres? Um, not really, man. I would just want to take some quick, small – takes at some of the college football. I mean, you saw Oklahoma yeah. oh, got yeah. upset. It. You know, the Big yeah. Ten finally coming in. You know, the rankings changed. Like, you had a team. What? Which team was it that was in the top ten and dropped an unranked? Think or it, it was may, in the top one? Was it maybe LSU? They were number six. I know they dropped out. And then Oklahoma. They're number um, 20 right now. Yeah. They're 20 I, now. I didn't but see you had a lot of teams out. drop. You had a mm-hmm. lot of teams drop. Like Tennessee, there was what they were. They were in the top ten, I believe. Now they're number yeah. twenty-one. So yeah, I mean, they just played it was okay. interesting to see. It was interesting to see a lot of the college football teams play. Mm-hmm. You know, I was not expecting Mississippi State, uh, but I should have thought about Mike Leach. You know, he, yeah. he is that type of guy. You know, a lot of people say his offense went working. At SEC. LSU don't look that he good, in my see. opinion. And they no, don't. They, do not. They're not looking that good, man. So not no, not that not. not that I did expect them to be great by any means. I kind of figured as much because they lost at literally everybody. They so, did. They did. It, it and, then, and then you look at Auburn, you know, you know they look pretty good against Kentucky. They, you know, I'm going to see Seth more. Seth Williams. Two Seth words. Williams. Seth Williams. He's a beast. So, he, he's going to be a – I hope I hope we'll be able to shut that one down uh, coming from a Georgia fan perspective. We got to talk – we'll talk about that real quick. Yeah, bad, bad, bad first half. I was in depression oh. mode first half. That one was that, – that first half was awful. Um – I don't know what's going to happen at quarterback coming up. We'll have to see. I, I Long term, if Stetson Bennett is our starting quarterback, not trying to crack on him, he's great. Like, I, I like him. He's a good quarterback. He's a great guy to have on the roster. But if he's starting at quarterback, my, my hopes for us um, actually doing big things this year, they, they're going down, man. So Well, it's going to be really hard for Georgia, man. I mean, look, we're playing an all-SEC schedule. Yeah. Next week, I mean, next week we're playing all I mean, dude, then we got Tennessee. Then you got Alabama. Then you got Kentucky. Then you got Florida. Dude, then, yeah. I, I mean, then we also played Mississippi State this year. Yeah. So, so, bro, we don't have no easy sledding. Like, no. every week, Georgia, you must play. Now, did they start off bad? The score don't show how the game actually went. Yeah. Everyone, Arkansas was pinned it to Georgia. And I would say Sam uh, Pittman, I mean, he's going to 
You're gonna have an Arkansas a boys right, you know, with oh, that yeah. offense get going. And I did not and I did not think uh remember when uh Felipe Franks quarterback for Arkansas uh yeah, quarterback for Arkansas, he transferred. I didn't know he transferred from Florida. Yeah, from Florida. That's right. Uh-huh. I I, he sucked. Hey, hey, he sucked at Florida. He sucks there. <laughs> I, I've never been. I've never been big on that man. He, he is not good in my opinion. Nah, that would be good on me. Either, hey, defense looked great. Our offensive looked line really is good. is looking a little yeah. sketch. Uh, Arkansas's defensive line was mm-hmm. kind of manhandling us for a little bit there. They were. We couldn't get our run game going at all. Couldn't get man. run game I, going. And going hey, at all. Stetson came in. Hey, like I said, more power. Kudos to that guy for getting it going and get. You know, he was completing passes. He was playing really well. So. I'll give them I that mean, much. We got to bring our A game against these these teams, like you said, week to week, though. I mean, when you practice with a starting quarterback, I mean, I bet a lot of them thought. I mean, because the SEC knew they were going to be playing. Yeah. And when you're practicing with Jamie Newman for majority of the spring, summer, early fall, and you're like, okay, this yeah. will be our quarterback. And then a few weeks later, uh, you're like, oh man, we got a different quarterback. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, he's not going to play with us. You know, Jamie Newman, you know, opting out, like, what, how what was that, three, four weeks ago? That, that yeah, hurt, it wasn't that long ago. That hurt. Yeah. It's like, you got to get in sync. you like, you start to get in sync because you have that quarterback. You get in sync with him. Mm-hmm. Now, oh, now, I mean, Jordan got depth at quarterback, but you don't want to be switching. I don't want to be doing this carousel every week. I don't oh, want to be going through the carousel. That. I want to know who my guy is, you know, so. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. they can play well against Auburn. Gonna be, I mean, that's a test. I yeah. mean, that's a big-time test. Because Auburn got it. I mean, Auburn got a really good defense. So, we're going to need to pit up a little bit more points in that first half. We're going to have a chance. So we're going to get blown out of the water. But, so, yeah. Um, I hope Georgia can uh, come through on this. I hope we right. can. So, got it's going to be interesting. It's yes, really sir. interesting. Any other uh, takes on these on these games? No, nah, man. I'd shout out to Cal Trash. You know, those six touchdowns uh, he had. Uh, Oh, yeah. Alabama looks pretty decent. You know, Alabama do look good. Uh, They're back on their trails. Can't wait. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to see some big ten football. Now to start in October. So, it's going to be – hopefully they have a college football playoff. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, we'll I hope see so, the best too. Yeah. You know, I think Ohio State probably going to just muster through the airs. Clemson going to muster through, through the airs. It's going to be the same. It's going to be understood with you. It's going to be the same team. Probably hey, well, now, hey, hey, maybe, maybe not. Maybe now that Oklahoma lost, we won't have to see them get their butt whooped. No, in the first we won't see the Oklahoma, no. <laughs> I hope not. So, no, at least we dodged that bullet. Maybe, maybe, Oklahoma. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe one of them will hopefully mess up. So, we'll see. <laughs> but, yeah, but, yeah. Well, hey, thank you guys for listening in. Do yourself a favor. Do us a favor. Subscribe to us on Spotify and Apple Podcast and like the show. Feel free to give us a nice review there and give us a follow on Instagram at TT underscore podcast and on uh, Twitter at the TNT podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening in and we will see you next time. Yes, sir.